I will talk you through this simple landscape. We'll do this together. You'll start off with a piece of watercolor paper and lightly trace the outline of a gentle hill. And then you'll turn your paper sideways and start wetting the paper from the top down to that hill. I suggest using 100% watercolor paper for this. It'll help your colors blend much more easily and it will soak up that water really nicely. Once you have an even sheen of water on your paper, mix up a dark blue for the sky. I'm even introducing a bit of sap green into the mixture, which is a blue-based green, and that'll give us some nice variety in the sky. And then you'll trace over that hill line, and we're going to place the blue-green down at the very bottom of the sky, and then a little swoosh up near the top. And then you're going to let that dry completely. Once that is fully dried, you'll come back in with some clean water and go back over that entire area. And then mix up a bit more of your pigment. We're going to create a glaze, putting one color over the first color that we just did. They're going to look very similar. This one will just be a little bit darker up at the very top of the painting. And then we'll create more of a gradient effect as we work our way down. So most of your pigment will be placed up here at the very top of the painting. And as you continue to move the brush down, it won't have as much paint in it. So you can see that the color becomes a little bit fainter. If your brush is running out of paint altogether, you can always pick up a little bit more like I did just there and go back in and complete your sky. And then you'll let that dry completely. And then we are going to create a small tiny person on our landscape. We're going to mix up a bluish gray. So I'm using some red, the ultramarine blue, and then the yellow ochre, and then adding a bit more blue to the mixture and we'll get a really nice, deep, dark, bluish gray color. Dab the moisture off your brush, and you can do that by just touching it to a paper towel, and that way you'll have pigment on your brush, but not too much water, because we want these lines to be very thin. So you'll draw a single vertical thin line, and then put a very slight circle at the top of it, and a very slight triangle off to the left side. Rinse your brush, and with a very little bit of clean water, just start at the bottom of your figure and drag a little bit down into the right to create a shadow. Then you'll mark your outline for the trees, just a simple line on the left side of the page, so that you have a bit of a guide for placing your tree line. And I'm mixing up some sap green, as well as some burnt umber, just to knock back the vibrancy a little bit, and make it more of a deep dark green. And then you'll start by placing some vertical lines for your trees. These will be pretty abstract, so don't worry about making these look like perfect trees where you can see every branch and every trunk. You are basically going to be creating a mix of vertical lines. And then think of upside down Vs for the branches on these trees and they're all going to be mixed and overlapped over each other. Work your way back and forth across that tree line. It should be a little bit taller on the left side and then slope down as you get toward the middle of your paper. And then as you're working through the tree line, you want to extend little vertical lines up here and there just to give the illusion of some of the trees being taller than the ones around it. I am using a size zero Princeton snap brush here. It is very small and it has a very fine tapered point, which is great for this incy weensy detail.
once your trees are in place, you will let those dry and then we are going to do some snow. So there is white in this palette, but I wanted an even more opaque white. So I'm using this one by Holbein. This is watercolor. I will tag it in the description below. The first thing we'll start off with will be the roof of the cabin. And you're just going to paint an upside down V. It should be a little thicker on the left side and then taper off when you do the right side. Now we're going to add snowflakes. So we want to protect our little person from spatter. So just place a little piece of tape over them and then put some watered down white on your brush and you will tap that brush over another one to create little snowflakes. Do that as much as you need to get the snow looking the way that you want. I probably did that about five different times. And now we're going in with a reddish brown and we're going to paint the cabin. So you'll go underneath the snowy roof that you created before. You're painting directly under that V and that will give us the look of a little cabin. And the red is a complementary color to the green, so it helps it stand out a little bit, even though these are all pretty dark colors along this ridge line. After that dries completely, come back in with a very little bit of white and just place a small vertical line that will add a window to the cabin. And then you can remove the tape and your painting is complete. <laughs> 